All right, so let me show you what I'm doing here before uh, I start working on the top. Uh, obviously, I turn the bench over um, on its back. So this is the front apron. This is the side that faces out. Um, and I started off by setting all of the nails that I put in here. And I set them real deep. Um, all the finished nails that I used to put in the uh, supporting joists or stretchers or whatever, bearing support blocks, whatever you want to call them, um, and also the big cut nails that I used to uh, attach the apron to the legs, um, I set those real deep also. I, and I mean like an eighth inch, eighth inch or deeper, these are all set because I'm still going to take my triplane and go ahead and plane this apron down a little bit. There's a little lip here because it's still pretty rough, you know, construction lumber. Um, so I'm going to plane this just a little bit just to take some of the crown out of it and uh, flush everything up, flush the legs up to the apron because they're up a little bit over here. Um, so I want to make sure that I get the, the legs flush to the apron and I get the apron eh, fairly flat, um, generally flat we'll say. It doesn't have to be perfect, um, but just somewhat flat. So I did set all those nail holes low enough so that I'm not going to hit them with my plane when I start planing the apron. The next thing I did was to lay out all the hold fast holes. Um, and if you lay these out ahead of time, actually, it makes things a lot easier. Because when I put that, when I nailed that um, one by to the back side, I already knew the location of all these hold fast holes so that I could put the nails between the hold fast holes so I can be sure that I'm not going to bore into any um, any of those nails and uh, catch a nail by surprise when I'm boring these hold fast holes. So I know that the nails are all lined up between the hold fast holes um, so I can go ahead and bore them. And I'm just using a 3 quarter inch um, Jennings auger bit to bore these holes. Um, because I use the, uh, the Gramercy hole fasts and they're set up for three quarter inch. And boring this way, I find easier to keep the bit vertical. Um, there's a little trick actually that you can do to bore horizontal using a, a wedding ring or a key ring or something like that. Um, but I find boring vertical to be easier to me. And again, I just put my forehead on the pad and uh, that helps me keep everything plumb. And I'm not boring all the way through. I'm only boring until the lead screw pokes out the other side. And I can actually hear the pitch and feel a difference when I get through the first layer into that pine one by in the back. And there we go, the lead screw is through. And once I have them all bored from this side, I'll uh, finish the holes from the back side. Once I have all the holes bored, then I go ahead and take my triplane and I'm doing some basic general flattening of the apron, just kind of cleaning it up, taking out any roughness and any humps, um, getting it generally flat, but it's going to be far from perfect. All right, I've uh, righted the bench upright again, the base. Um, I've got the top boards on top. I've actually got a couple of spacer blocks between them, so you can kind of see, um, so that they're separated because I'm going to start to bore the hold fast holes for the backboard. Um, and, you know, if you need to plane the side that's going to go down um, first. Go ahead and do that. These boards were amazingly flat, this one particular board. My aprons weren't as flat, but the two boards that I picked, or actually the one board that I cut in half and picked for the top, um, was amazingly flat for construction grade lumber. So um, I'm using it for the top. I won't have to do any flattening to the bottom side to attach it and then I'll just have to do some minor flattening to the top. So I laid out all the hold fast holes um, for that back board, but I'm not boring all the way through 
um, I'm boring again just until the lead screw starts to come through the other side and then I'm going to stop. And the reason for this is because I'm going to turn this board over once I have all these holes started and I'm going to glue some blocking um, to the bottom side of these hold fast holes to make them a little bit deeper so that the hold fasts have a little bit more to grab. Um, the one and a half inch thick top isn't really enough for the hold fast to get a good grab. Um, it really needs, you know, at least two inches um, to be able to grab well. So by putting some blocking underneath these uh, hold fast holes and then boring through the blocking, we'll have almost three inches um, for that hold fast to grab, and that'll be plenty. So I'll use a uh, shim as a glue spreader. Again, some liquid hide glue. Spread this around. You don't really need it at the exact center since that's where the hole is, but if you get it there, it's all right. The, uh, the bit will go through it. Spread it around. And I'll go ahead and just rub it down. A little rub joint. Just clean up the squeeze out. Do another one. So you can already see how versatile these hold fast holes and um, this wide apron is going to be on this bench. Um, I don't even have any vices or anything on it yet. I'm just using a, a pair of hold fasts in the legs and I got a hand screw um, at the front that is clamping this top board here to the apron to keep it from sliding forward. Um, but it allows me to plane the edge of this eight foot long board without any problem whatsoever. And I don't even need a vise. All right, so let me kind of show you where I am right now. Um, I had gotten that edge of that uh, top board planed. The top's almost done. The back top board is done, the dog holes are bored, and that board is ready to be attached. This is the front top board. It's almost done. Um, I have to cut the mortise for the planing stop in it, um, and it'll be done. Um, what I also did, you can see here, is I glued and nailed some 7 8 inch by maybe one inch, one and a quarter inch or so thick um, cleats to the support stretchers. So there's a, you know, here's the support stretcher. Now there's a, a cleat that I glued and nailed on that's about 7 eighths of an inch thick. And that's what I'm going to use to attach the top. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, glue just the front edge and the back edge, um, put screw holes in the, the front and then an elongated screw hole towards the middle um, so that this screw will be allowed to move as the top expands and contracts and that'll hopefully keep it flatter. Um, so it'll be fixed at the front, the backboard will be fixed at the back, and both of them will be attached with screws in slots in the middle so that those boards can move. Um, unfortunately, I thought I had the screws to attach the top, but I don't, um, so I'm going to have to get those. So in the meantime, I've started to turn my attention to the shelf underneath. Um, so what I did was nail some cleats to the lower stretchers that I can then attach these um, 1x12s to. They're not 1x12 anymore, but um, 
so around the outside they sit on the cleats and in the center they're joined together um, by a tongue and groove joint or a match joint. Um, so I thought I'd just take a minute just to kind of show you how I'm going about doing this. Now what I'm going to use is a pair of match planes. Um, so these are two separate planes. One plane that makes the tongue and another plane that makes the groove. Um, and they're single purpose, dedicated tools, but they're very good at what they do. Um, you can also get single planes that do both the tongue and the groove, and you can get them in wooden versions. You can also get them in metal versions. I think the Stanley 48 was one, um, and I think Lee Nielsen is now making a replica, sort of, of the Stanley um, 48. Um, the plane that makes the groove is pretty simple. There's a fixed fence along the outside that sets the distance for the groove and these planes were made to handle certain thickness of stock. Now this particular pair was made for one inch thick stock but I'm actually using it on three quarter inch stock and what you'll see is um, what it means is that the tongue and groove aren't going to be centered so the planes were designed to center the tongue and groove on a one inch thick board because I'm using it on a three quarter inch thick board you can get away with it but it just, the joint just isn't centered on the board. So this one cuts a quarter inch groove. There's a skate, just like a plow plane, that supports the cutter, and this is a quarter inch iron. Um, and there's a depth stop. You can see here the depth stop is built in. So when the groove is this deep, the plane stops cutting and you know you're done. The second half of the pair cuts the tongue. Um, and again, there's a fence that's fixed to, to center the tongue on one inch thick stock and the cutter is split so that it cuts away on either side. Now, one uh, misconception that a lot of people have about these planes is that this iron should be perfectly straight across which means that both shoulders of the tongue board should be perfectly aligned. Um, and that's actually not true. With the old planes, the way they were designed, the far side, so this um, shoulder here, was actually designed to cut a hair deeper than the inside. And the reason for this was that you would reference the fence off of your money side or your face side, the side that you wanted to show. The back shoulder would then be slightly deeper so that when you put this joint together, it was guaranteed to close up on the show side first try. There was no fitting. There was no trial and error. Um, you didn't have to worry about getting both shoulders perfect. The back shoulder was relieved just a little bit so that the front of the joint would close tight. Um, so for that reason, if you, if you get yourself a pair of match planes and the iron looks uneven and one is a little bit longer than the other, um, don't try and quote unquote fix that and make them parallel. They really shouldn't be. Um, this one should cut just a hair deeper than the inside one. Makes them a little bit more difficult to sharpen, um, but um, it's worth it because you know it allows you to make this joint extremely fast um, and not worry about whether or not it's going to fit and have to do any fitting of this um, non-show shoulder. Everything's going to fit and it's going to close up tight on the show side every time. So the hardest part about learning to use um, these particular types of planes is keeping the plane plumb. When you first start using these types of planes, they have a tendency to want to lean towards the outside because you're, you're sort of pushing down. So you need to sort of compensate for that and learn to to really sight down the plane and work on keeping it plumb so that you're cutting correctly. Now you can see the shavings starting to get thinner now and the sound is changing. Should just be one or two more and this will probably be done. Yeah, maybe one more. Okay. And 
and there you go. Once the plane stops cutting, you're done. Then you know your joint is to full depth. And like I mentioned, there's really no test fitting or fussing around with it because the way the plane is designed, it's designed to fit right the first time without any adjustment. So there you go. That front shoulder closes up nice and tight. And the back shoulder has a very slight, slight gap, ever so slight on the back side. But the front is nice and tight. So now I can finish fitting them. You can see here how I attach the cleats to the inside of the stretchers. And these are just attached with nails, no glue. So you can see at each corner, I'm gonna need to notch at each leg the boards that are going to go in there. So what I'm going to do is just use my divider to take that notch measurement. And once I have that, I'll just transfer it to the board. So I could take that measurement, transfer it using the dividers. Get my square. And my knife. And I know There's my notch. And I'll just use my little dovetail saw to cut it out. There you go. So before I go and attach the tops, um, I went ahead and I cut the mortise for the planing stop. Um, and to, all I did to do this was uh, very similar to cutting out the, um, the mortises and the legs. I just bored a couple of holes, bored four holes in the corners, bored a few other holes, chopped out the waist, and then paired to clean it all up. Um, the hold fast holes in the backboard are finished. The blocks were glued underneath and I bored back through the other side. I went ahead and made the planing stop, um, which is just a piece of two and three quarter inch square um, dug fur left from the four by four leg stop. And it's a, it's a tight fit that has to be tapped through so that it'll sit there and then when I want to raise it, take a little mallet or whatever and tap it up so that we're good to go. And I, there's my planing stop. Um, to attach this, uh, and I'm just using my half inch straight edge here as a, um, a spacer, because I'm going to leave about a half inch between the front board and the back board. Now, what I'm going to do to attach these, remember I mentioned I added cleats to these cross stretchers here. Um, so what I'm doing is the closest hole, the hole closest to the outside, is just a standard hole. And then the hole at the middle is an elongated slot. 
and that will allow the top to expand and contract with the seasons. So I'll add a bead of glue along the apron um, and you know maybe along the first inch or so of these cross bearing pieces. Put a screw through this hole to hold everything in place and a hole through the slot and this section won't be glued. It'll be allowed to float so that it can expand and contract um, as the seasons change. So to mark the holes, all I'm going to do is set my boards in place and I've clamped the backboard here. Line everything up. And then I can just reach underneath with uh, my brad point and go ahead and mark the holes. So before I go attaching the front board for the last time, um, what I did was to put some blocking underneath the top to support the planing stop. Because once this planing stop is in, the forces from planing against the stop are going to want to widen the mortise in the top because this is only an inch and a half thick. Um, so by adding some blocking underneath, it will hopefully prevent or at least slow the wearing of the mortise or the planing stop and keep it tight enough so that I can use it for a long time and I don't have to replace either the top or the planing stop for a while. Um, so how I did this was to slide the top in place, attach it with one screw at either end just to hold it temporarily, put the planing stop through the top and then build the blocking around the planing stop with everything in place. That way I was sure that the blocking lined up with the mortise and I wouldn't have to go fitting or adjusting anything afterwards. And I just fit the blocking in piece by piece and then glued and nailed everything into place. So now with the blocking in place, now I can go ahead and attach the front, the top front board for the last time. And again, I'm just going to do this with screws, just like I did for the backboard. Now with both top boards firmly attached to the base, the next thing that I want to do is to flatten this top um, and plane this front edge flush with the apron. Um, now because I took the time to select a board for the top um, that was relatively flat. I was able to get two good flat planks out of it. Um, and also because I took the time to make sure that the base was straight and flat and free of any twists when I assembled it and, and put the cross um, stretchers in. Um, I don't, I'm not going to have to do a lot of flattening on this. This top is already fairly flat. I checked it with a straight edge along its length and it's very flat in that direction already. Um, because you know I took the time to make sure the base was flat before I attached these boards. Um, I checked the width which is actually the most important um, area to be flat um, and I do have a little slight hump in the middle here um, a little high spot not much but um, it is a high spot that I'm gonna work on taking that down first. Um, so since I don't have a lot of material to take off I'm just gonna use uh, my triplane and plane across the grain and get it flat. If I had a lot of material to take off, I'd start with the jack plane and then move to the triplane. Um, so again, I started by checking with a straight edge across the width and I noticed the slight high spot in the center. So I'm going to start by planing the center. Um, and in my experience, it really has shown that the, the really the most important, the most critical place that the bench needs to be flat is across its width. Um, a little bit of deviation from flat along the length isn't a big deal because when we plane our stock and we hand cut our joinery, um, we can adjust for that and, and you know we can there's a little bit of give in pieces along their length, much more so than across their width. Um, when we're cutting dovetails or, or tenons or something like that, we want to make sure that those boards when we're cutting them, when we're laying out those that joinery are flat across their width. So this dimension really is the most important. So I'm just going to start with my triplane and uh, start by taking down 
the center area, that the little hump in the center, and then I'll plane full width. So now I've gotten the center section leveled down to the point where just planing in the middle isn't really taking any shavings anymore. So I know that the center is a little bit lower than the outside edges. So now I can start to plane completely across the width of the bench. Um, and you might notice all the lines that I have drawn here. What I did was just draw lines across the entire bench top, spaced about three quarters of an inch to an inch apart, just to help me gauge my progress. Um, since you know the bench is fairly flat to begin with, I only want to take off the minimum amount necessary to get it flat the rest of the way. So by drawing all these lines, it helps me gauge my progress. I know that as I plane my way up and down the bench, when I plane the lines completely away, I know I'm pretty much done. All right, so all my pencil marks are gone. And a quick check at several locations with my straight edge. Shows that we have the bench flat across its width. So now I'll just uh, take a few passes with the plane straight up the length just to clean it up a little bit. Now with the top planed, the last thing I want to do tonight is plane the top flush with the apron and you can see I turned the bench on its side in order to make this easier on myself. You may want to get yourself a helper to uh, help you flip the bench down because it's, uh, it's pretty heavy at this point and no sense in injuring yourself. So I'll just take my jack plane and my tri plane and plane it even. So that is essentially the bench. Um, you can stop here and use this bench as is. I mean, really, with all the holds, the holes for hold fasts in the apron and the legs and in the top, um, you could really use this bench as is without any vices um, or any other additions to the bench. You've got planing stop in the front corner, holes for your hold fasts in the top, and in the apron, you can always bore additional holes in the top if you need to. Um, you can clamp things to the front apron. So, you know, you could really use this bench as is without adding anything additional. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, add a little bit of gingerbread to it. Um, I'm going to be adding a crochet or hook. Um, Rubo calls it a crochet, which loosely translates to hook, uh, which is the wooden hook shaped piece in the drawing that goes on the front corner of the bench. And I'm also going to be putting a twin screw vise down this end um, in order, you know, for, for doing things like sawing dovetails and tenon cheeks and the like. Um, but, you know, you can even leave the vise off um, if you didn't want to go through the trouble because um, it's really not necessary on a bench of this type. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm going to be doing it just because I really like the twin screw. I used it on my old bench and I, um, you know, really took a liking to it. So um, I'm used to using it. So I'm going to include it on this bench, but I'm going to make it removable so that I can take it off when I don't need it. Um, so I'll be working on that in the next and final episode.